Hello and welcome back to my basement. This is Jeremiah Wolf, and today we're going to uh, go over a couple of questions that people have been asking me, specifically about study methods, techniques, um, career advancement, and uh, specific CCIE questions. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, first question, hi Jeremiah. I'm genuinely interested in learning about your approach to studying and managing tasks, as I believe your methods, co uh, methods could be highly beneficial. Um, could you think about making that video? Okay, so let's talk about that real quick. How do I study? Um, I get asked this question a lot. Uh, not every day, but a lot. And um, I will admit that every time I hear this question or read it, I get just a little bit peeved off because it kind of implies that I have some, some special trick or technique. Um, no, I don't. I really don't have any special trick or technique. Studying is hard. Studying sucks. Studying takes a lot of time. And that's it. Like that is the, that is the secret. Make the time to study if it's important to you. Uh, I do have one tip, one tip, uh, a couple tips. <laughs> what the one big one in terms of the only like brain hacking tip that's really worth its salt is, uh, after you study, uh, go to sleep take a nap or go to bed, um, your brain will tend to retain more if you sleep right after studying. Other than that, you know, like study when you're fresh. I was watching a, um, I think I mentioned this actually, I can't remember. I was watching a video, it came up on my feed like, I discovered the key to, to, to studying as a med student. This one trick completely transformed. I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. I study a lot. And it was this guy, he's a med student, right? Like he's studying to be a doctor and he's like, you know, for a long time, I would get up, I'd go to the gym, I'd go to class, I'd do my rotation, I'd come back to uh, my room or to my uh, apartment, and then I'd study. And, uh, you know, it was so hard. And then one day I realized that if I study when I'm mentally fresh, it goes easier. That was the one big trick from this med student <laughs> that transformed his academic career. Study when you're mentally fresh. Now, if hearing that causes you to go, whoa, I never thought of that, then maybe, maybe engineering isn't for you. Maybe thinking through problems isn't really going to be your, your thing. No offense, but anyway, that's it. Like, study when you're fresh. Uh, try to go to sleep after you study if you can. And, um, you know, don't waste time. Just don't waste your time. Like, learn to be efficient. As you study, you will learn what works for you, okay? And this is the thing. Like, anyone who's successful in life has the ability to examine themselves and change their behaviors as much as possible to meet their goals. Like, that's just, you know, some things are very, very difficult. Um, but when it comes to studying, like, being able to understand what works for you and what doesn't, I would expect you, if you... If you have any chance of being a successful engineer, I think you should be able to do that. Um, yeah, there's really not a whole lot more to it. Uh, there was one other thing I was going to say. What was it? Uh, study when you're fresh, sleep afterwards. Oh, and look, if you don't waste your time, if you're reading a page and you're just not getting it, you're just not getting it, you have to keep reading, reading, and reading. Maybe you're just too tired. Maybe it's the time to put the book down. Take a break. Um, when you do take breaks, actually take a break. This is another thing that people don't think about. They take a break, and then what do they do? They go and they just bombard their brain with more stuff, you know, social media or video games. Like, the idea that video games are relaxing and, and are mental break is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. There are some super low-speed, low-stress video games out there that are incredibly boring, in my opinion, but... The idea that you're going to take a break by doing something that's really mentally stimulating is stupid. If you're going to take a break, sit quietly. Sit quietly, close your eyes, breathe. You know, take a break. And then go back to it. So, um, you know, this stuff, it seems so obvious to me, but I get frustrated because people seem incapable of figuring this stuff out. When you take a break, take a break. If you're too tired and you can't read, like you just can't follow along with your reading, then stop. You're wasting your time. Why would you sit there for two hours forcing yourself to read something you're not going to remember? 
Just go to bed. And then finally, I will say uh, in regard to studying the um, videos. Videos, in my opinion, uh, are a necessary evil to some extent because sometimes there's just no other option. But uh, rarely will you ever learn more in a video. Videos are usually a waste of time. Usually. Um, it's just, it's just the, unless they're walking you through like doing something practical, if you're listening to lecture in a video, you're almost certainly wasting your time. Read a fucking book. Now, there is some thoroughly debunked old school thinking that some people learn by hearing, some people learn by seeing, some people learn by, do no, that has been thoroughly debunked. It's bullshit. Um, almost every single person is going to read, f learn far more, far faster by reading. I get it. Reading is boring. Get over it. Like, what do you want in life? You want everything handed to you? I'm sorry, I'm being really mean about this because I get sick of this shit. I get sick of people who are like, how come I have to work hard to be successful? Why isn't everything just handed to me? And I get sick of it because I've, I've had to work. So this, you know, I'll tell you the story. I think I've told you the story before, but years ago, my brother and I are driving. We're in the car for 10 hours together. And I'm not, I don't spend a lot of time with my, with my family. But something came up. We needed to go help another family member. So we're in the car for 10 hours together. And, you know, at some point, just talking about random stuff, you know, goes away. And you, you have, start having a serious conversation. And my brother says to me that, uh, you know, something to the effect of, you know, it's, you're so lucky that your life has been so easy, that you've made all this money and you've uh, had a pretty easy life. Like, you're really lucky that that was, you know, what handed to you. And and I I... You know, I got, I, didn't say, I don't know if I got mad, but I said, well, you know, we've made different choices. And he, he got furious, I mean, like furious at me that I would imply that his choices has impacted his life and that somehow my life, which compared to him, is a lot easier. It is more laid back. I don't worry about the things he worries about because, you know, we have more financial resources. Um and yeah, he, he, I mean, he was furious at me and uh, I'm like, you know, he's like, what do you mean? My choices. I'm like, dude, uh, you know, I, I spend all my free time studying all my free. I don't play video games every now and then I'll take a couple weeks after the CCIE. I played a lot of video games for a good two months. I played Baldur's Gate three. I had loved every second of it. I played it like two or three times all the way through. Loved it. Uh, but that is extremely rare for me. Usually out of an entire year, I will take, I'll set aside, okay, for the next two weeks, I'm going to play this game. But other than that, almost no video games. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. I watch YouTube because it's something I can watch for 10 minutes and then turn off. But there are so many shows that I want to watch, but I don't because I know that I'm going to get sucked into it and then I'm going to start binge watching it and it's going to take away from my studying. Um, I don't do that. You know, my brother... Uh, he, he likes to drink, he likes to party, uh, he likes to hang out with friends. I don't do those things. I've never done those things. I have always studied. From the time I was, like, first learned about certification at 21, studying has been one of my primary pastimes. It's not something I, I enjoy, but I do enjoy the benefits that I get from it. So, but I spend a lot of time on it. So, I, you know, I get frustrated when people are looking for some secret or they think that somehow I game the system um, like, look, like it's, I, this is what I spend my time on. It's been a lot harder emotionally, uh, especially the past year. It was, you know, when my son was born, there was a lot of issues and for the first two years were hell. And I really got very little studying done. And then when I got back into it, but the last year or so, um, you know, he's like, I, I genuinely, genuinely enjoy spending time with my son. I just love it. Yesterday I had, I had the afternoon off. I went and picked up my son from daycare uh, we went and got lunch and we just hung out. And he's, you know, he's three, not even three and a half years old. And I, I just enjoy spending time with him. And when, when I have to tell him, sorry, bud, I, I got to go do work. I got to study. Like, man, it rips my heart out every time. I hate it. That look of disappointment on his face. There's few things in this world that get you like that. But, um, but it's what I got to do, you know? So, but I try to balance it. I try to balance it. So I, I'm kind of rambling at this point, but the point is like, there is no, there's no easy method. You just have to make sacrifices and decide to spend your time studying. That's it. That is it. 
Um, yeah, okay. Next question. Uh, okay, do you read documentation or do you, ha do you have a dedicated reading studying time? Do you read? Okay, so we talked about the reading and studying time. Let's talk about documentation real quick. Uh, so here's just something I found real quick in my shortcuts. It's actually out of date. V Edge policies, um, they've, they've discontinued the V Edges, so this is going to be less and less important. But here's, here's a piece of Cisco documentation. They all look the same. And yeah, look, when you are reading documentation to study, Generally, you have the blueprint, so you know what you need to know. Not always. Not always do you know every, th every little detail you need to know. But what you can do is you can skim the documentation and then read the relevant portions. You will find as you go through documentation, like so this, this um, how big is this? I don't know. It's uh, decent sized. 200 and... Uh, 200 and 76 pages just for policies but what you're going to find is of those 276 pages a lot of it repeats itself there's a lot of verbiage that every single section they'll just repeat over and over again there's a lot of things especially like in the in the commands section where they're going to give you every single option of the commands usually you don't need every single option especially if you're if you're labbing this stuff as you're you're studying you're going to figure out there's only a few things you actually need Lots of the 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 stuff is um, you know really in the weeds that you're not really going to need to know, and um, yeah, that's that's it. I mean, w once you read through the, the the thing is, so this you know this guy asked me this question: Do you read documentation from start to finish? To me, that kind of implies that he's never even tried, because once you get in the documentation, you learn very quickly. You really can't read it cover to cover or it becomes pretty obvious that you shouldn't there's so much that's repeated um you know like i was doing the d recently i did like the vpn and the firewall uh, exams and there's command line documentation and uh gui documentation and there's huge chunks of that are just copy and paste between the two sections so you know and then so yeah so no just skim skim and then read when you get to something of of meat read the you know read the important parts no you're not always going to know what's important um but if it seems like it's a major technology or certainly if it's on the blueprint uh if it seems like it's super niche you know maybe you could skim over it and look if you look at my last couple uh score reports um i you know i'm passing but i'm not getting 90 percent obviously i'm missing a lot of the information that is on the test i'm getting enough to pass and you know, that's, my, that's kind of my strategy is I take a test to pass the test. The reality is if I take a test today and I pass it and I get some new certification, it might be weeks or months before I ever touch the technology that I learned on that exam. It might be, you know, I might never do more than, you know, my, in my career with all the stuff I studied for CCNP, uh, C, uh, CCNP security, um, you know, all the things that I studied from the, Basically, year 2000, you know, for the next 15 years, taking tests. And I, I actually did on a daily basis, not even on daily, that I actually did ever, may, maybe at most a third of that stuff, you know? I don't even think I ever did half of all the stuff I studied. So I don't have the attitude that you need to be a master of every single thing that's on the exam because the reality is you're not going to do that in your daily career. So when it comes to reading the um, documentation, just be smart about it. Just skim it where you can skim it, read it where you can read it. The documentation oftentimes is pretty light on theory unless you're reading like a white paper about a specific technology. And, you know, if, if, you, if you need to know a technology and you're reading the white paper or um, like a, just a, some, some of the, I don't even know what they call them, but they have documents that are really just talking about the technology configuration is sort of like an afterthought it's mostly about the technology you, yeah you probably want to read those like really read those when you're reading the configuration guide it's pre usually pretty light on theory uh, it might do give you a quick little primer and then just all the commands obviously you're not going to need to memorize all the commands so you know lab it up make sure you understand it and move on and if it's not in the blueprint uh, or if it looks super niche then just skim it and you know move on um, so yeah, that's that. So, okay, next question. 
Uh, how can, can you make a video from how you go from entry level to help desk uh, where you are now? Look, uh, there's no there's no simple solution to this. Uh, you know, I get this kind of question a lot too, and I've actually talked about this before. I get a lot of a lot of guys who reach out to me and they're like, "Hey, Jeremiah." I am in this completely unrelated field, and I want to get into networking because it sounds really cool to me, but I don't want to start from the beginning. I want to make you know $150,000 a year on my very first job in networking with a CCNA. How do I do that? I work for your daddy? I don't know. Like, How do you do that? That'd be great. When you figure it out, you tell me. Uh, then we'll, put, we'll package it in a course, and we'll sell it and become millionaires because that's not how the world works. Um, how do you go from help desk to where you, to, to, you know, you just, you do the work. Uh, like I said before, I am, I have always been studying. I worked at a, um, here, here's this. Okay. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. You distinguish yourself. You distinguish yourself, uh, by knowledge, by, um, by work you've done, by accomplishment and by social interactions distinguish yourself. That's how you advance. You have to distinguish yourself. When it comes time for advancement, the people who are making those decisions should already know who you are and already be thinking about you. Um, and while this isn't always the case, uh, depending on your job, it's often very, you know, I have most of the jobs that I have got in my life, it was because someone I knew helped me get that job because I'd worked with them previously and they were impressed. And when a job came available where the place they were working now, they thought, oh, shoot, hey, there, Jeremiah, maybe I can get Jeremiah in here. It'd be awesome for him to come over here. That's happened to me multiple times. Not always. Sometimes, you know, you just go in, you interview, and you get the job. But it's always about distinguishing yourself. That's how you advance your career. You know, I, so I said a few minutes ago, look, I've always been studying. Since the time I learned about certifications, I have always been studying. And I think throughout my entire career, I averaged a test like every three to six months. And, you know, including the time where I'm working 50, 60 hours a week, I still would manage a test every three to six months. I'm doing tests a lot faster right now because I have more free time right now. But um, even when you're in the thick of it, you really need to be planning out, you know, what do I need to be studying? Where do I want my career to go? What do I need to recertify in? And you're just going to, you're going to always be taking tests. So that's, so that's distinguishing yourself through uh, knowledge. You need to get on projects, man. Like when, when a project comes up and this, this is the thing. Okay, let's, let me start here. Two things. First off, I worked at a small computer company way, way back in the day. I was like, I got the job when I was 20 years old. And, you know, it, and the thing was, there was two of us. Out of all the techs, there was like maybe eight guys who were techs. Two of us wanted to advance ourselves two of us everyone else was like i'm not studying i'm not getting i work enough i already work so many hours i'm not gonna go home and study screw that they already got too much of my time and are they going to give me a raise if i study no they ain't going to give me no raise so why am i going to study two of us said you know what i think it's worth studying so of all those guys guess what two of us left two of us managed to leave and double our salaries within a matter of months, just by studying. While all those other guys, years later, were still there, still making nothing because I'm not going to study. So, you know, like, uh, that's one example. Another example is uh, I have definitely a couple companies where I've been in a more senior position. There, there are guys who, they come over and hang out with the engineers. They work at the help desk but they come over, hey, uh, do you guys have anything I could help out with? You know, most of the time the answer is, oh, sorry, man, no, I, we're just kind of busy, we're doing our own thing, but, you know. But, you know, they come over, they hang, they come over, they talk, they want to they want to know about what we're working on. If you go to a senior guy and by you asking questions, showing interest in what he's doing, not bugging him, not disturbing him, not getting in his way, but by letting him know, hey, I think you're cool. I think what you do is cool. I think you might have something to teach me. Everybody has an ego, and nobody has a bigger ego than engineers. So if you get in there and you, sh and you show them, hey, like, I think you're really cool. You think maybe you could? They're, they're going to love it. They're going to love it, unless they're super overworked and stressed out. But 
and they're going to try to teach you. You know, they're not going to sit down and say like, okay, type this, but they're going to say, hey, we got this project coming up. We could use a little bit of help. You want, you think you want to help out? Um, I personally have helped multiple guys advance their careers just because they seemed interested. Meanwhile, all their coworkers are, you know, they're putting in their time and they're going home. And I, I would talk to some guys. I, I remember, and this, this is it's the similar thing. It's like similar to what I was just saying. I was at this one company. We, we had a help desk. And, you know, the help desk guys were all jealous of us engineers because we were working on cool things and we weren't just, you know, answering the phone all day. And so a lot of them would come over and they'd want to, like, chat us up. And then when we'd say, hey, man, I'll tell you what, like, you get your CCNA and I will, I'll promise you, I can get you some, get you on some projects, but you got to get your CCNA. Oh no, I, I don't, I can't do, I don't want to do that. That's how, how, how long is it going to take? I don't know. It might take you like six months, you know, depending on where you're at, how much time you devote to it. Yeah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Meanwhile, there's a couple other guys who are like CCNA. Like, yeah, there was one guy who's like, dude, I, I want to. But I just, I, I can't really afford the study material. And, you know, like he showed real promise. I paid, I paid to help him get a CCNA because he showed real, you know, promise. And he became an engineer. And now uh, he's the director of uh, engineering at a company. So, like, that's how you do it. You distinguish yourself. And then, so I've talked about, uh, you know, through accomplishment, through, um, doing project stuff like that. And then the, the other way is you need to distinguish yourself socially. Like when it comes time for promotion, the managers and directors should know who you are. When it comes time for layoffs, the managers and directors should know who you are so that they don't lay you off. Right. Um, that's really how it works. Like it's, we're human beings, we're social animals. And although you've been told the best way to pr get a promotion is to just put your head down and do your work and put in the hours and you need to be working 50, 60 hours a week. That's how you're going to get promoted. No, that's never how it works. Never how it works. The guy, if there's two guys, there's you and your coworker, you work 60 hours a week, you're getting things done. You just come in, you knock it out, you go home, but you're putting a lot of time, a lot of effort. You're making a lot of sacrifices for the company. Meanwhile, your coworker, he works 40 hours a week and he goes home. He hasn't really been on any big projects, but, but he's always going around talking to the managers, making jokes. When there's any kind of like after work social thing, he makes sure he's there having a good time. When it comes time for a promotion, who's going to get the promotion? He is. He is because they know him. They like him. And you, we are human beings. We try to help people we like. That's just how it goes. It's not fair, but it's how it goes. So that's how you build your career. You distinguish yourself through knowledge, through achievement, and socially. Last question. Is the service provider path worth that? I don't know. That's up to you and your career. Good luck. All right. See you in the next one.